Scientists express physical quantities using a variety of different units. This may be because different communities use different units by convention, or because certain units may be more convenient than others in working with particular scientific problems. In this screencast, I will introduce unit conversion. There are three main points that will be addressed. The first is the concept of an equivalence relation. From this, we will see how conversion factors are derived and how conversion problems essentially are successive multiplication by one. Finally, I will discuss the cancellation of unit labels to determine the units of our final answer and as a means to guiding us through the conversion process. By the end of the screencast, you should be able to answer a problem such as the following. How many yards are in 432 kilometers, given the conversion factor 1 meter equals 1.09 yards, and knowledge of the SI prefixes? If you already know how to work such a problem, then you may find the material in this screencast mainly review. To convert a physical quantity expressed in one unit to that same quantity expressed in another unit, we need to understand the relation between the units. In other words, we need an equivalence relation between them. Some examples of equivalence relations are the equality of one with itself, the fact that one dozen eggs is 12 eggs, or in comparing the masses of objects, the relation that one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. Note that here we take the one as exact and that the number of pounds in a kilogram is rounded to two significant figures, namely 2.2. Equivalence relations give rise to conversion factors, which as we will see simply equal one. Consider for example the simple equality five equals five. If we divide both sides by five, which preserves the equality, we can readily see that 5 over 5 equals 1. Let's now do a similar manipulation with the equivalence relation 1 dozen eggs equals 12 eggs. Dividing both sides by 1 dozen eggs yields the conversion factor 12 eggs over 1 dozen. And from the algebra we can see that this conversion factor equals 1. Dividing any quantity by itself gives 1. What if we had divided by 12 eggs instead of one dozen? In this case, we would get the conversion factor one dozen eggs over 12 eggs, which again equals one. An equivalence relation such as 1 kilogram equals 2.2 pound yields two conversion factors. Dividing both sides of this relation by 1 kilogram yields the conversion factor 2.2 pound over 1 kilogram. Dividing by 2.2 pound yields the conversion factor 1 kilogram over 2.2 pound. There are two important points to remember about these conversion factors. First, they are reciprocals. And second, they both equal one. Having derived some conversion factors, we can now see how they are used to convert the units of a physical quantity. Converting from one unit to another is just multiplying by one. And multiplying anything by one leaves it unchanged. For instance, 5 times 1 equals 5, or 5 multiplied by 1 3 times also equals 5. Remember that a series of numbers or quantities, each in parentheses, as shown here, is used to indicate multiplication. In many conversion problems, we will successively multiply by conversion factors, which is equivalent to repeated multiplication by 1, leaving the physical quantity unchanged, although expressed in a different unit. As an example of using a conversion factor, consider multiplying the physical quantity 10 kilogram by the conversion factor we derived earlier, namely 2.2 pound over 1 kilogram. 
This yields 22 pounds, as multiplication by 10 simply moves the decimal point one place to the right. Why not, however, take 10 kilograms and multiply by the reciprocal of the conversion factor I just used? As they both equal 1, shouldn't this yield an equivalent answer? Plugging 10 divided by 2.2 into the calculator yields 4.54 repeating, which I will round to two significant figures. Note that the decimal point on the 10 is used to mark that the zero is significant, and hence it, like the conversion factor, has two significant figures. If multiplying by a conversion factor is just multiplying by one, why did I get a different answer? Well, I didn't. To see this more clearly, we need to take a closer look at the units, which as you can see, I have omitted from the answer of our second calculation. To determine the units resulting from the application of a conversion factor to a physical quantity, we need to recognize that units cancel just like factors. You know that 10 divided by 5 is 2. One can also see this by factoring the numerator and denominator. The factors of 10 are 2 and 5, and the factors of 5 are 5 and 1. The ratio of the factors 5 over 5 is simply 1, or in other words, they cancel, leaving us with 2 over 1 or 2. Similarly, we can take the algebraic expression 4xy over x. Here, x and y are variables. The widespread use of x as a variable is one reason why it is not frequently used as a symbol for multiplication in scientific applications. The common factors of x in the numerator and denominator cancel, leaving 4y. Units can be viewed as canceling just as the factors above. Applying this concept to our previous calculation, In the expression, 10 kilograms times the conversion factor 2.2 pounds over 1 kilogram, the factors of kilogram cancel, leaving units of pounds. Recall that in multiplying fractions, one multiplies the numerators together and the denominators together, and that 10 can be viewed as 10 over 1. In the alternate expression, 10 kilograms times the conversion factor, one kilogram over 2.2 pounds, there are no units to cancel. Consequently, the result of multiplying the numerators and denominators together results in the unit of kilogram times kilogram divided by pound, or kilogram squared per pound. Although not commonly used, the kilogram squared per pound is an acceptable unit of mass. Note that it is made up from a series of other units and hence can be termed a derived unit. Applying the two conversion factors to 10 kilograms resulted in the two equivalent physical quantities, 22 pounds and 4.5 kilograms squared per pound. All three represent the same amount. They are numerically different only because they are expressed in different units. Another way to view our two results is that they are the answers to two different questions. The first is how many pounds are in 10 kilograms? The answer to this was the result of multiplying by 2.2 pounds per kilogram so that the factors of kilogram canceled. The second is how many kilograms squared per pound are in 10 kilograms? The answer to this was the result of multiplying by one kilogram per 2.2 pounds. We are now ready to turn our attention to a couple of example problems. The first is, how many farquads are in 3.5 farquhar? Given the equivalence relation, 2.8 farquhar equal 1 farquad. It is useful to first think about the path we will take in the calculation without worrying about the specific numbers given in the problem. The equivalence relations are the stepping stones that we need to get from the start to the finish of the problem and the units they contain tell us the order and number we need to use. We want to convert from Farkle to Farquad, 
As we have an equivalence relation that directly relates the two quantities, we can do this in one step. So let's solve. We know from the problem that we start with 3.5 Farkle. From the equivalence relation, we also are given two conversion factors, 2.8 Farkle per one Farquad, and one Farquad per 2.8 Farkle. We are asked to find how many Farquad. We start with a quantity we know, 3.5 Farkle. We know that one of our two conversion factors will convert this in one step to Farquad, but which do we use? As can be seen, if we multiply by one Farquad over 2.8 Farkle, the units of Farkle will cancel, and we are left with the desired unit of Farquad. If we were to have used the other conversion factor, we would not have gotten the proper units. Plugging into our calculator and rounding to two significant figures then yields our answer of 1.3 Farquad. We now return to the problem that was presented at the beginning of this screencast. How many yards are in 432 kilometers, given 1 meter equals 1.09 yards? We need to convert kilometers to yards. The conversion factor given does not convert directly between these units. Working backwards, the conversion factor 1 meter equals 1.09 yards converts yards into meters, but not kilometers, so we will need an additional step. Still working backwards, we need to get from meters to kilometers. The SI prefixes provide the necessary equivalence relation. The SI prefix kilo, abbreviated K, is synonymous with 10 raised to the power 3, or 10 to the third. To use this, we write 1 kilometer equals, and then replace the K for kilo with 10 to the third, or 1 kilometer equals 1,000 meters. This equivalence relation gives the conversion factors 1,000 meters over 1 kilometer, or 1 kilometer over 1,000 meters. Similarly, the equivalence relation 1 meter equals 1.09 yards gives two conversion factors. We now have the information and understand the path we need to answer the problem. Start with what we know. There are 432 kilometers. Now multiply successively by two conversion factors. The first will convert kilometers to meters, and we need to choose one of the two in blue. We want to cancel kilometers in 432 kilometers, so the conversion factor with the one kilometer in the denominator is the one we will choose. Next, we convert meters to yards. The conversion factor with meters in the denominator will cancel the unit of meters and leave us with the desired units of yards. Plugging into our calculator and rounding to three significant figures gives our final answer. Note that the units of our final answer are what remains after canceling the other units, in this case, yards. I close with one final problem that involves derived units. A derived unit is one that contains a product or quotient of one or more of the basic units. The problem asks us to convert the density of water at 20 degrees Celsius from grams per centimeter cubed to kilograms per meter cubed. We proceed just like in our previous problems, but we need to pay attention to the fact that part of the unit is in the numerator and part in the denominator, and also the fact that the centimeters is raised to a power, in this case three. Here's the path we will take. We want to get from gram per centimeter cubed to kilograms per meter cubed. To convert the gram on the numerator, we are going to need the conversion factor relating grams and kilograms. From our previous problem, we can reason that one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. For the centimeter cubed in the denominator, we recognize that the SI prefix centi is 10 raised to the minus two power. So replacing the C in centimeter with one times 10 to the minus two yields one centimeter equals one times 10 to the minus two meters. Proceeding with the calculation. One gram per centimeter cubed 
multiplying by one kilogram per 1,000 grams results in the unit of grams canceling and leaves us with the desired unit of kilogram. We then multiply by one centimeter per one times 10 to the minus two meters, recognizing that centimeter cubed is simply centimeter times centimeter times centimeter. Multiplying by this conversion factor once cancels out one of the centimeters. Multiplying by the conversion factor again cancels out one more centimeter. And finally, multiplying one more time cancels the final centimeter and leaves us with the units in the denominator of meter times meter times meter or meter cubed. Multiplying this out yields a final answer of 1 times 10 to the third kilograms per meter cubed. Note that I express the answer in scientific notation so that I can explicitly indicate the two significant figures on the density we started with. Just as any number of conversion factors can be combined, Note that the successive multiplication of the centimeter to meters conversion factor can be combined into a single conversion factor, one centimeter cubed per one times 10 to the minus six meters cubed, and that this is just the cube of the single conversion factor, which should make sense because we are converting a unit raised to the power three. To summarize, Unit conversion is simply the successive multiplication by one. An equivalence between two quantities can give us two ratios or conversion factors that are reciprocals of one another and that equal one. Units can be canceled just like factors. So multiplying by conversion factors in a way that cancels the units we don't want and leaves us with those we do is the key to doing unit conversion problems.